Canva. All right, so we're going to look at Google Cloud Spanner. But first, the database schema of a database system is its structure described in a formal language supported by the database management system. The term schema refers to the organization of data as a blueprint data as a blueprint of how the database is constructed. So blueprint of how the database is constructed, divided into database tables in the case of relational database. And here you can see like, oh, there's like a picture of a schema. That's kind of what we just drew. So to learn about Google Cloud Spanner, you could go to Google Cloud. And in Google Cloud, there's Google Cloud AWS. Those are your two choices, in my opinion. And Azure, Microsoft Azure, is not a choice, in my opinion. But it's not an informed opinion. I haven't used all of them. So if you come to Google Cloud, it's like you could rent machines, processing power. You can rent storage, different types of storage. So if you look at products, cloud computing, analytics and machine learning, identity and security, collaboration and productivity, maps, professional services. Here we have compute, we have compute engine, scalable high performance virtual machine. So you could just rent a machine, throw an operating system on it and log into it remotely, put your applications on it, you're running. All right, that's what, uh, I'm just making sure my camera's off. That's what my website, Greater Commons, runs on, Google Cloud. App Engine is like platform as a service, so it's got like additional functionality and code already built for you. There's infrastructure as a service, IAAS. Infrastructure as a service. That's just give me the hard, just give me the metal, the machine. Platform as a service is like, oh, there's some stuff built into it already. It's already kind of ready to go. Software as a service is like Salesforce. It's like software that's platform ready to do something. So you could get IAAS, the machine, virtual machine, PAAS, platform with stuff already built onto, onto it, platform as a service. Or SAAS, Software as a Service. There's Kubernetes, containers, right? So you could containerize your application. There's a serverless compute platform, cloud functions. It's a whole new way to build applications. You don't worry about the server. You let them worry about it. All right, so you got all these different computing things you could do. You got storage, cloud storage. So you could just store a whole bunch of stuff. Firebase, different things there, migration, networking, databases. Cloud SQL, MySQL and PostgreSQL database service. SQL, right? Big table, no SQL. Schema, schema list. Cloud Spanner. Mission critical, scalable, relational database service. Data store, no SQL, schema list. So let's look at Cloud span Spanner. First, horizontally scalable, strongly consistent relational database service. Horizontally scalable, strongly consistent relational database service. Okay, well, I recognize that one, relational database, right? We've been learning about relational databases. How, how is the different data related? Can we put it into related tables, related piles? Can we create relationships between the tables? <clears throat> this is a great video. We're going to watch it in a second. Horizontally scalable. Let's look up what that means. This is how you do it. You're like, I don't know what horizontally scalable means. Difference between scaling horizontally and vertically. Horizontal scaling means that you scale by adding more machines into your pool of resources. So more machines, horizontal. Vertical means you scale by adding more power to an existing machine. So existing machine, vertical scaling, more CPUs, more RAM. Horizontal scaling, more machines. 
So horizontal scaling is what you have to do when you run at scale and serve millions of users. If you create an app that serves millions of users, you need to be able to horizontally scale. You can't get big enough vertically. And that's a big, a big, a, that's been a big pain point over the last decade, 15 years, as companies have scaled up. So this is horizontally scalable. It's a relational database service that's horizontally scalable. Strongly consistent. We'll learn about that in a second. Traditional relational database. Does it have a schema? Yes. Non-relational. SQL, right? No schema. It's like, here's a place where you could store stuff. Have fun. It's on you. We're not going to, we're not going to, with no SQL, we're not going to, we're not going to put onto it any type of framework that tells you how you have to create and store your data and connect it. That's up to you. Good luck. It's up to you as the developer. Schemaless, right? That's no SQL. Traditional, you got a schema. You got to create your tables. Got to create relationships between them. SQL, traditional, relational, yes. No SQL, and that's why it's called no SQL. It's schemaless, and there's no SQL, <laughs> right? But it scales horizontally, right? Schemaless scales horizontally. Sweet. I could go up to a million users, but it's eventually consistent. Well, when I write that data, I might not see it for five seconds or 10 seconds, and that could cause issues for things where we need to, you know, user saves the data, and then it's like it's not showing up. It takes a while to replicate that data across many machines. So it's eventually consistent. A relational database, strongly consistent. But it's not horizontally scalable. This was the catch point between traditional relational and non-relational. Schema and schemaless. SQL and no SQL. Right? Like SQL, strongly consistent. Love it. Doesn't scale vertical, doesn't scale horizontally. Crap. <laughs> right? No SQL, schemaless. Love it. Scales horizontally. Uh, hate it. Eventually consistent. Guess what? Cloud Spanner, strongly consistent. Yes. Horizontally scalable. Yes. That's what makes it like, whoa. They figured it out. Amazing. <coughs> Automatic replication across machines. So it manages all of it for you. The price, 90 cents an hour. And data. 90 cents an hour per node, $3 for an hour if you want to be across all the data locations around the whole world so people in Australia are served from Australia and it gets to them quicker. $3 an hour. Okay. 3 times 24 times 30. We're paying $21.60 a month. But you're not paying to have some engineer Buy machines, configure machines, put them in different locations around the world, keep them running, set, you know, know the settings and configurations on the back end. You're not paying for that. And if you just go for, let's just start out in California. All right, now it's 650 a month to be running all the time. Last night I played with it for an hour, burned 90 cents. <laughs> That's my credit. Right? Out of 300, I got $299.10 remaining and 364 days in my free trial remaining. And then you're going to pay for storage for data, 30 cents per gigabyte. So compare that to Google Drive, maybe 11 cents a gigabyte, 19 cents a gigabyte. I don't know. You could look it up. But you got to pay for it. So you're paying for driving a Ferrari or driving a Lamp. That's not a good analogy. You're paying, this is the better analogy. You're paying for driving a BMW. It's good, solid engineering that's going to do what you need it to do when you need it to do it. Rocket ship, rocket ship, to the moon, to the moon. Rocket ship, rocket ship, to the moon. So that's, that's, the, that's the amazing stuff. That's what we're going to learn to work with. And uh, for the last part of class, I'm going to show you this video. 
And we never got to seeing the news access. We ran out of time. So uh, if you are watching this online, go watch this video right here. We're going to watch it in class, and then I'm going to take a roll, and you're going to get let out a little bit late, and we'll call it a day. I keep wanting to turn off the camera. <laughs>